Hello, you beautiful people. This is Sebastian. I'm the novice prospect, and we are playing VR games. Right now, we are playing Star Trek Bridge Crew. So let's go through this, right? What we're gonna do in this episode is we're gonna say hello to our hands and our body. Then we're gonna say don't show this again and say okay. Then we're gonna go through the training. Okay. Leave all this as is and start. So let me realign in my actual boundary. And here we go. Welcome to the Starfleet Training Simulator. Our system is currently configured to train command crew of Aegis-class starships. Here you may learn about the roles and responsibilities of each officer on the bridge, and how to operate all of the controls of their command stations. Feel free to experiment and get comfortable with the ship here in the simulator before moving on to the real thing. Uh, considering that the simulator is an actual holodeck? Very impressive. Let us start with the captain. As captain, you are in overall command of the crew. It is your responsibility to communicate with and to coordinate the actions of the other officers on the bridge. You'll receive important updates on mission status and also have direct control of the main view screen. They're watching us, I'm sure. But let's look at our objectives. The captain's objectives feed contains vital information about your ship's mission. Updates from support crew and Starfleet Command are reflected here, so that you will always know what your crew needs to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Some objectives also have more detailed information. Sometimes you, as captain, must choose between different ways to complete an objective and direct your crew accordingly. In all cases, your crew depends on you to keep them informed of their goals. Of course. Select the objective for more information. Well... Sometimes you will receive additional information to help with your mission. Keep an eye out for your intel feed, located near your objective readout for tips and hints. So let's learn about hailing. As captain, you can answer a hail when messages from Starfleet or other ships are received. If the message is accompanied by video, it will be displayed on the main view screen. Answer the incoming hail now. Aegis. This is Captain Uku of USS Huxley. Our system checks are complete. We're ready to go. Cool. We'll stand by and follow you out when you're ready. You do that. So, next, we are talking about... At any time here. while on the bridge, you can use an external view to see what is going on outside and around the ship. Ah, the Y button. Hmm. That looks like Earth right there. But, cool. Next. As captain, you can access basic information about your ship status. The status information available to you is helpful, mm -hmm. but no substitute for the more detailed knowledge of your chief engineer. I think it's there. As no. captain, you have the local map. As captain, you have the same maps at your fingertips as your helm and tactical officers. You may use these to aid communication, to identify a target for tactical, or to specify a destination for helm. Targets and nearby destinations are selected from the local map, which shows objects of interest around you. Of course. Now touch any object on the map to select it as your target. Some orders you give to the crew require you to first designate a target or destination, exactly as you just did. Mm -hmm. Then we shall... When playing alone or with AI members mm -hmm. of the command crew, the captain gives orders to the AI officers. To give an order to a specific officer, look at them and use the orders system to select from the available commands. Remember, some commands will first require that you select a target or destination. Try ordering your chief engineer to prioritize power to engines. Some orders apply to the entire crew. To access these orders, look towards the central console in front of you. First, select the closest ship from your local map. Then try ordering the crew to investigate it. Okay. So, 
Look at engineering. Is it you? Ah, power to engines. Hi, Captain. Maximizing power to engines. Crew and orders are in the middle. And we're going to scan the target. Understood. Changing target. Scanning. You Staying with updating target. Scanning. I finished the Okay. So now we're learning. Impulse engines allow the ship to rapidly traverse great distances within a star system. When playing with an AI crew, you will need to choose a destination and give the orders to prepare mm -hmm. for and initiate impulse travel. First, choose a destination from your impulse map. You need to select a destination from the impulse map. Now give the order to prepare for impulse. Your chief engineer will give more power to the engines and your helmsman will lay in a course and align the ship. Tell the crew to engage impulse flight. Okay, perfect. Now we're waiting for them to line up. Now we're waiting for them to properly line up and then Course we plotted. can engage the impulse drive. Make it so. Make it so. Make it so. Aye, aye. Make it so. I thought I did that, but you know, what's a cap to do? Cool. So now we're looking at the warp map. The ship's warp drive can generate a warp field distorting space around the Aegis and allowing you to travel to other star mm -hmm. systems cool. much faster than the speed of light. When playing with an AI crew, the captain chooses a destination and gives the orders to prepare for and initiate warp travel. Indeed. Always bear in mind that charging the warp coils consumes most of the ship's power. Mm -hmm. The Aegis will not be able to maintain a full combat stance during these critical seconds. To go to warp, First, choose a destination from your warp map. You need to select a destination from the warp right, map. Now warp. give the order to prepare for warp. Your chief engineer will direct power to the warp coils, and your helmsman right. will lay in a course and align the ship to the correct heading. What? Now tell your crew to engage the warp drive. We aligned? Does it look good? Yes. Go. Aye, understood. <laughs> lessons possibly uh, few captains have control of the main view screen you may choose to display any of several different overlays on the view screen with information about your ship's system status try the different views and overlays available the target and magnify views only work when you are targeting another ship or object magnify provides an up-close view of your selected target Target view provides enhanced situational awareness, showing both your own ship and your target at once. Okay. So. I mean, in this case, we could probably go magnify a target, which is this target somewhere, and there's the exterior of our ship, and all good. So. Sometimes, as captain, you may wish to take temporary control over another command station. This allows you to perform any of the functions of that role, then return to the captain's chair when ready. You cannot, however, take control of a station currently being operated by another player. To take control of another station, look at any of your AI command crew and activate orders mode. Now choose the take over option. You can return to the captain's chair at any time by tapping the orders mode button again. Which I did. Oh. Captain, we didn't quite finish all In this. emergency situations, you can sound a red alert to notify your ship's crew. If you are playing with an AI as tactical officer, she will interpret a red alert as a request to prepare for combat. Try activating red alert now. Shields raised. Arming torpedoes. Oh, we know that sound very well. 
Yes. And then we have a help overlay on that there button right there. It tells us what all the different things are. Awesome. Topics. Let's... Stations. Now we're talking about the helm. As helmsman, you are the ship's navigator. Okay. Responsible for maneuvering the ship yes. and navigating within and between star systems. Your crew depends on you to get the ship wherever needed, Good. to avoid collisions with hazards in space, and to maneuver for tactical advantage in combat situations. Okay. So let's talk about Your local the map can map. be used to mark ships and objects as waypoints, to check your proximity to hazards, hmm? and gauge when you are close to being detected by hostiles. Touch any target on the map to select it. Then your basic maneuvering, maneuvering controls allow you to give the ship forward or reverse thrust, to steer the ship to port or starboard, and to move the ship up or down on its vertical axis. The amount of thrust you can give depends on the amount of power your chief engineer allocates to engines. The more power your engines have, the more responsive the ship will be. Maneuvering controls are only available when your local map view is active. The throttle controls your speed and also allows you to reverse or make a full stop. this way and yes good next impulse travel your ship's impulse drive allows you to travel quickly between mm -hmm. planets and other points of interest within a star system Indeed. to travel via impulse you will first need to plot a course by choosing a destination on the impulse map once the course is plotted you will then need to align your ship with the appropriate heading and engage the impulse drive be aware, the impulse drive cannot be engaged unless the chief engineer has allocated sufficient power. Select any point of interest in the star system to plot a course to that Plotting destination. Course. Now return to the local view and steer the ship to line up with your plotted course. And then we can see actually here is the line that we need to align to, so I can probably just do a bit of a right turn. A bit forwards. And Grab and push your throttle to engage the go. impulse drive. Uh, the ship's computer will go. automatically follow the course you plotted. Make it so. Good. Let's talk about the, the ship's warp, warp drive can distort space around the ship to propel it faster than light across the vast distances between star systems. The tremendous amount of energy needed for warp travel will require you to coordinate closely with the chief engineer. To travel by warp, it is your responsibility to plot a course by selecting a star system on your warp map. When the course is plotted, you will need to align the ship with the proper heading. Okay. Before you can enter warp, your chief engineer will have to prepare the ship and charge the warp coils. Select a star system to plot a course to it. Now return to the local view and steer the ship to line up with your plotted course. Push your throttle to engage the warp drive. The warp coils can only remain charged for a limited time. The chief engineer will need to prepare the ship for warp again. Various systems of the ship affect how easily other vessels can detect the Aegis. The Aegis is designed to avoid detection at ranges where other Federation vessels would be easily visible to another ship's mm -hmm. sensors. As helmsmen, the more thrust you are using, the farther away the Aegis can be detected. On your local map, you'll see a ring that expands and contracts as the ship's signature increases or decreases. When other ships come within that ring, they will detect the Aegis. You can see I also went to the max, and then if we went... Went at zero, there. That ring goes down again, perfect. 
And then we too have a elbow valley. You know? Just like the other ones. Perfect. So, next station. We shall talk about the tactical position. As the tactical officer, you are in charge of the ship's weapons, defenses, and scanners. Okay. In combat situations, you must coordinate with the rest of the bridge crew to protect the ship and deal with any threats to it. But you also have a crucial role in non-combat situations. It is the tactical officer's responsibility to scan nearby ships and other objects okay. in the environment to reveal vital information about them. So... Let's talk about In order to targets. scan anything or to fire on it, you must first target it. To select a target, simply select the appropriate icon on your map. Once you've selected a target, a display will show all currently known information about your selection. Target a nearby ship by tapping its icon on the map. Mm -hmm. You will often need to scan a target to learn more about it or to locate people or objects of interest in another vessel. Some objects are scanned with a simple, general scanning action. This happens automatically when the object is targeted. Mm -hmm. More complex objects, like other ships, can be scanned for specific properties, such as the locations of any weak points in a ship's system. When an object has many features to scan, scanning them all at once is much slower than scanning a single specific system yep. scanning is required before it's possible to transport people or cargo off of another vessel or before being able to target weak spots of an enemy's ship systems target a nearby ship by tapping its icon on the map okay here you can select what systems you want to scan scanning a single system will always be faster than scanning multiple at once also, the closer the ship is to the target, the faster you can scan. Scan the ship's engines now to reveal their status, and any weak points which would allow you to damage the engines directly. Mm -hmm. As tactical officer, you have control over raising and lowering the ship's shields. When raised, the shields will charge up to maximum strength over time. They are your best defense against damage to the ship. When shields are lowered or down to zero strength, any damage to the ship may cause serious harm to onboard systems or even loss of life to your crew. When shields are raised, the chief engineer can direct power to them to increase their effectiveness. Raise the shields now. There is a delay while power is channeled into the shield emitters before the shields come online. In a combat situation, remember that you need to raise shields before the enemy fires. Cool. So, next, we are dealing with Photon torpedoes. Photon torpedoes are a devastating weapon. They can automatically track a moving target and deliver heavy damage on impact. However, before you can fire them, you must first give the order to arm them. Arm your torpedoes now. Each torpedo tube takes time to load. Your supply of torpedoes for any mission is limited, so use them wisely. Target the nearby ship and fire torpedoes at it. I'm not just gonna fire them, I'm gonna try and find a weak spot, if I can. Okay, so what about... Going for their engines, why not? Bye. Good. See the shield damage. Phasers are a versatile energy weapon. They continually charge over time, mm -hmm. and when fully charged, your phaser banks hold enough energy to fire multiple shots at your target. Phaser banks automatically track your target, but only if it is within the indicated firing arc and within the current range of your weapon. Okay. The effective range and damage of your phasers is controlled by the amount of energy the chief engineer allocates to them. Target the nearby ship and fire phasers at it. We're gonna go and scan them. Cut the 
shield. But more and phasers can be used to precisely target weak target. spots of another vessel. To use this ability, you must first scan the desired subsystem of a target, such as its weapons or engines. Mm -hmm. Once scanned, you must then select that system. As long as a scanned system is selected, phasers will auto-target that system's weak points. To hit a subsystem, the target's shields must be down or inactive. Second, your ship must be correctly facing the targeted point. If the target's shields are raised, or you are attacking from the wrong angle, firing in subsystem targeting mode will do minimal damage. When dealing with other ships, targeting individual systems is a good way to disable them or neutralize a threat without okay. outright destroying the ship. Cool. This may sometimes be necessary to accomplish your mission objectives. Mm -hmm. Target the nearby ship and scan its weapon systems. Now select the ship's weapon systems to lock on to their weak points. Your phasers are now in subsystem targeting mode. Fire them for a precision attack. Until the target's shields are down, you will not be able to hit the targeted system. Phasers can be used to precisely target weak spots of another vessel. To use this ability, you must first scan the desired subsystem of a target, yeah, such as its weapons or okay. engines. Once scanned, you must then select that system. As long as a scanned system is selected, phasers will auto-target that system's weak points. Okay. To hit a subsystem, the target's shields must be down or inactive. Second. Your ship must be correctly facing the targeted point. If the target's shields are raised, or you are attacking from the wrong angle, firing in subsystem targeting mode will do minimal damage. When dealing with other ships, targeting individual systems is a good way to disable them okay. or neutralize a threat without outright destroying the ship. This may sometimes be necessary to accomplish your mission objectives. Target the nearby ship and scan its weapon systems. Now select the ship's weapon systems to lock on to their weak points. Your phasers are now in subsystem targeting mode. Fire them for a precision attack. Until the target's shields are down, you will not be able to hit the targeted system. Damage the targeted system. Uh, 
second track. Various systems of the ship affect how easily other vessels can detect the Aegis. Uh -huh. The Aegis is designed to avoid detection at ranges where other Federation vessels would be easily visible to another ship's sensors. As tactical officer, arming torpedoes, firing weapons, and activating shields will each make the ship detectable from greater distances. To reduce the ship's signature, disarm torpedoes and lower shields now. The Aegis's prototype remote intrusion system can be used to send encoded signals and disrupt critical systems of other ships. Before it can be used, the tactical officer must scan the target. Once a scanned target is selected, an intrusion into its control systems is attempted via an automated routine. If successful, you may then choose to attempt any of the available disruption routines to temporarily cripple a specific system. Activate the remote intrusion system. Target a nearby ship by tapping its icon on the map. Select a scan target. Choose a disruption routine to inject into the target systems. Very good. But once used, the remote intrusion system will be fully occupied and unable to disrupt another target or system for some time. System. Your ship is equipped with standard transporters okay. for beaming objects or personnel aboard from other vessels or locations. Transporting first requires the tactical officer to scan the target vessel or location. If any mission critical items or personnel to transport, the target will appear on the transporter interface. It will take time to acquire a lock on mm -hmm. before you can beam. And we can't transport. And you must remain in range for the lock to succeed. The transporter cannot penetrate through your ship's own shields or those of another ship, so you must coordinate with tactical to make sure your shields are down when you need to transport. If you are attempting to beam something from a hostile vessel, your crew will first have to disable its shields. Activate the transporter interface. Target a nearby ship by tapping its icon on the map. Good. Select the damaged ship from the list of targets. Lock on to the survivors aboard the ship to prepare for transport. To lock on, your ship must be in transport range and unshielded. The target's shield, if any, must also be down. You have transporter lock on the survivors. Give the order to energize. The survivors are now safely aboard the Aegis, but you can only transport six at a time. Anytime there are more than six targets to transport from a single vessel, you will need to perform multiple transport cycles. Good. All we need to do now is wait for the transporter logs. Energize. Skadoosh. Others are still awaiting transport. Lock them on again. Yep. And get them off. There are still Six others more. aboard. Lock them on. And 
get them transported. Good. All individuals accounted for. Good. Head overlay. Same thing again. We press the button and all the help tips are available. Nice. Now we need to go to the engineering section. As chief engineer, you mm -hmm. support all other members of the bridge crew by keeping the Aegis operating in top condition. You monitor vital status information about the ship's systems, allocate power needed for maneuvering and combat, mm -hmm. and manage the ship's power grid to compensate for damage or boost its capabilities. You also manage the ship's repair teams and keep an eye on how visible the Aegis is to other ships in the area. Okay, let's work on power. Up. How you allocate power determines how effective each of those systems is. As situations change, you'll need to communicate with the rest of the crew to keep them supplied with power and to anticipate when to make critical adjustments. Mm -hmm. One of your most essential responsibilities as chief engineer is to distribute available power between each of the ship's major systems. Try giving maximum power to engines now. Now try giving maximum power to shields. You will have to reduce power to other systems first. Before the ship can travel between star systems, you must make the ship ready and charge its warp coils. This draws a tremendous amount of power, and you will be unable to make any further changes to power allocation or routing while prepping for warp. Begin preparing for warp now. Charge the warp coils. The helmsman will have a limited time to engage the warp drive, okay. or the coils will automatically discharge to prevent damage to the ship. Warp coils charged. When the ship sustains damage, yeah. it's up to you to deploy repair crews and get critical systems back in working order. You have a limited number of crews available. You may send multiple crews to repair a single system faster, or you may spread them out to work on multiple systems at once. Activate your repair controls now. We have simulated damage to your phaser banks and scanners. Assign repair crews to both systems to get them back to full working condition. And then whoever is finished first will assign to the other crew. Actually, you go in there. Good. Sensor array restored. And uh, the phaser banks restored. Good. Then we are. It's possible about to increase routing. the power to one or more systems beyond normal safe mm -hmm. operating limits by rerouting the ship's power grid. Switch to rerouting mode now. Try diverting extra power to shields by dragging an adjacent power node over to it. You have increased maximum shield strength by drawing some power from other systems. This situation is risky, though. Mm -hmm. The extra power flowing through those conduits could cause internal damage. When you use the rerouting system, you must keep an eye on the power grid and be ready to make changes as needed. Okay. Then we'll Various the systems signature. of the ship affect how easily other vessels can detect the Aegis. The Aegis is designed to avoid detection at ranges where other Federation vessels would be easily visible to another ship's sensors. As chief engineer, you can monitor all systems which are affecting the ship's signature and gauge the range at which the Aegis will be detectable to other vessels. This information is vital when trying to avoid contact with hostile ships. Minimum power there. Awesome. And again, we have a help overlay telling us about all the different systems. And with that, we are done with all of the intro. We have done all the tutorials. We've done, we've learned about all the systems. So yes, thank you for joining me. I will catch you again. And hopefully more VR content. And if you want to join me, let me know. Let Tarsus know and we can do it. I will see you soon. Bye.